I remember thinking it might be the last ever time I get the chance to, to win a world championship. As you grow up, everything always looks better when you look back. Oof, a young Nick with lots of acne. Yeah, so this was um, my first world championship in karting, 2010. I was 15 years old. It was my first world championship and I remember very well my thoughts going through, through my head going into the last lap and I remember thinking it might be the last ever time I get the chance to, to win a world championship because you don't know what happens in the future. So um, yeah, I went into the last lap and I was like, no one, no one will ever remember who finished second. So I just uh, yeah, give it, give it my best and, and try it and, it and it worked out. This is in, in, at, at the MTC in Woking, so the McLaren Technology Center. I spent a long time there. I kind of became a, a young adult uh, at McLaren, learning and developing as a, yeah, as a driver. Uh, so it was certainly a very good time and I'm grateful for the opportunity they, they gave me. That was uh, Formula Renault 3.5 uh, in 2015. Uh, that was my first season with Dumps after winning the um, Formula Renault TDT Euro EuroCup uh, Championship in 14. You know, it's, it's, a, it's always a, a quite specific dynamic. Like, when you go through the ranks, you, you follow the ladder up to Formula One, uh, that, that kind of uh, environment is very different than a professional environment because everyone is young and everyone is pushing and, and pursuing a career in, in, in racing. And, uh, there is a lot of uncertainty, you never really know what, what's next and you're heavily dependent on, on people that support you. So the whole dynamic is quite in, intense, but when I look back, I, I love the whole process. But obviously, as you grow up, everything always looks better when you look back. This was the um, Monaco feature race in Formula 2 in 2019. Always been quite fortunate Monaco. In, in 17, I had my first F2 win. Uh, in the sprint race, but yeah, in Monaco. So yeah, we've always had a good time, but I never I didn't win the feature race in, in Monaco yet. And I knew that was a, a good opportunity. So yeah, I was very, very pleased to win that race. Obviously Monaco is very unique. I, I'm fortunate enough to call it home now as well. And you know, that is just a special place for, for kind of every racing drivers. And my family was there as well. They, they funnily enough, only come to one race a year and that's, that's that one. <laughs> uh, so um, yeah, good memories. Our dream, dream, dream team in in '19. Yeah, that um, ended in uh, yeah in, in a success for, for all of us. It was the most euphoric feeling I've ever experienced. It it was it was the, probably the biggest emotion I had was relief and satisfaction. You were working towards that point for such a long time, and the F2 Championship is also extremely tough with everything that is involved in it, like all the, the kind of the tire degradation, the, the teams that are competitive, all the young drivers that want to come through. So it's far from straightforward. So I was just um, very grateful that I was fortunate enough to, to, to win that one. Wow, braces. Yeah, I've had those quite late. But my, my face cleared up quite well in, in, in the meantime. I think I had I, I, I sorted out my acne when I was like 20 and I sorted out my, <laughs> my braces when I was 21. So it took, took me some time to get past the puberty uh, fever. So yeah, Max, another uh, fellow Dutchman who is obviously doing incredibly well in, in Formula One. Uh, he's an incredible driver and he, he really deserves all, rec all the recognition. Um, and yeah, he, he is great. He's also a very, very nice guy, very down to earth, very humble and uh, very genuine uh, to, to the people around him. Thanks to his success in Formula One, um, our, the, the sport in general has kind of gathered a lot of um, interest and, and momentum again in the Netherlands. It was kind of off the radar for a little bit when we haven't really, when we didn't really have any, anyone really there being able to, to show good things. So um, yeah, he kind of put our sport back on back onto the radar and um, thanks to his success, people started to, to follow our sport and then yeah, people that were actually um, interested to look at other 
disciplines in racing as well came perhaps across my name and and that's how uh, yeah uh, I gained some some fans too. Saudi. Uh, yeah, my first uh, first one in Formula E, which was uh, probably my best one to date. I mean, turning up in Saudi, we were very competitive from the first moment in, in FP1 and we carried the kind of dominance through the whole weekend. It doesn't often happen uh, in, in Formula E to top both free practice sessions, group qualifying, Super Bowl and, and the race. So it was a, a unique weekend and it, to, to kind of start the season like that and to win my first Formula E race uh, with, yeah, in such a way was very, um, very special. Yeah, Stoff, um, Stoff and I, my teammate. I think we, we have a very, uh, very good relationship. We get along well, also outside racing. We live in the same, same country and town, so we spend a lot of time together also traveling. So speak the same language, which, which is nice because we can actually speak about stuff without anyone understanding what we are saying. Well, we have a few Dutchies in the team, which caught us out a couple of times. But uh, yeah, we, uh, we have a good relationship. Our big boss, <laughs> Toto. Um, yeah, I, I'm obviously also a little bit part of the, the Formula One team. Both Steph, Stoff and I share reserve driver duties for the Formula One team. So we kind of do 50-50 each. Toto was also a little bit involved in, in our Formula E success in, in Berlin. It was great to see his kind of passion there because he he didn't obviously have officially a, a duty and a role within the team, but it was honestly uh, very encouraging to see his passion and, and uh, his struggle to, to uh, yeah, stay off the radio, radio and come on and, and yeah, share his thoughts and opinions. It, it just showed that he, yeah, he's a true racer and um, he has a true passion, uh, passion for our sports. That was Berlin. That was the end of the season. Yeah, after a roller coaster season with lots of ups and downs, a very strong start of our team, and then having some difficult weekends, coming back in London and then in Berlin, obviously everything kind of played in, in our hands in the end. And, and I, I, from the from the moment I jumped out, I, I acknowledged our uh, fortune. But at the same time, we also led majority of the championship, and we put ourselves in that position. Uh, and also, you know, the, the, every race gives equal points. So, so it's not like, of course, Berlin was chaotic, but if it happened two weekends earlier and London was the last event, then the perception would have been different. So I think ultimately we can still comfortably say that, that yeah, we, we won this. Like the, my initial um, thought, or initial emotions were like uh, disappointment after the, the, the race because I, I felt like we did a very strong race, we had a good package and we should have finished on the podium, P3, um, and we didn't. And, and it was, that was a disappointment to me and, and, and then I had to kind of, yeah, um, just be told that we, we secured both championships and then it slowly started to sink in. And when I jumped out and came in front of the camera, I think, at that point, it just quickly went through my head that we were very fortunate to, yeah, be kind of chosen by the fortune to, to win this. I'm lost for words. I'm starting to get a little emotional. <laughs> and finally, if you just go to the next page, that's blank page, what's the one pitch you'd like to see on there if we come back next season? What picture would you like to be seeing that? Oh, I would love to see a repeat of uh, season seven and I hope that we as a team succeed to defend both championships and end this journey with Mercedes uh, on a high because everyone that has been involved in this deserves that. I personally feel also responsible for making that happen and making sure that yeah, we, we succeed together.